Hello everyone. I want to create a series of videos uh, where I talk about the authentications methods uh, found in SAP BTP destinations. Uh, so if I go into my SAP BTP sub account and I want to create a destination and if I look at the authentication uh, field, I have a whole bunch of uh, authentication methods that I can use. Uh, so I want to go through each one of them and uh, see uh, when it is appropriate to use uh, which kind of authentication mechanism. Uh, so if I go back to my slide, uh, so based on whether the authentication flow requires a user JWT, uh, we can broadly classify the authentication flows into two types of categories. Uh, one is uh, where the user JWT is not required and where the user JWT is required. Uh, so, so today we will talk about the uh, no authentication and the basic authentication and possibly the OAuth2 password uh, flows. Uh, so no authentication uh, is fairly straightforward forward. Uh, so here there is no authentication. So this is a publicly available OData service, the Northwind OData service, uh, publicly available and uh, you can create the destination like this. Uh, so if I go to my SAP BTP, I've uh, created a Northwind OData service destination and this uh, destination has uh, no authentication. Uh, so you can see that this uh, Northwind uh, uh, destination has uh, no authentication and we can easily consume this from our application as well. Uh, so if I go back to my uh, SAP BTP, uh, my, uh, my business application studio, uh, what I can do is uh, since I have uh, the Northwind database uh, destination created, uh, I can issue a curl command and I can go ahead and access uh, the uh, API uh, through the destination. So here I can get the products and I get can get the top two products. Uh, so if I run this, I should be able to get the top two products uh, in JSON format. Uh, so this is the no authentication. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, so fairly straightforward. Uh, you go ahead and create a destination, uh, provide the URL and uh, uh, and there's no test, uh, no authentication required. Uh, now, the next thing I want to talk about is the basic authentication. So in basic authentication, uh, it's going to challenge you for a username and password. Uh, so in this case, uh, instead of using the Northwind uh, OData service that is publicly available, I'm going to use the SAP Gateway Demo System, and you can create your own free account there, and this requires uh, basic authentication. So I have provided my username and password. So very similar to the no authentication destination destination that we saw previously, except uh, here you have to provide a username and password. Now that you have provided the username and password, it is uh, fairly straightforward to consume this destination as well. Uh, so I can use the curl command and I pass in my destination name and then this uh, keyword test. And then I make a call to product set. And again, I get the top two uh, and uh, I get it in JSON format. So if I run this, I should get the uh, products, uh, the top two products uh, and fairly straightforward as well. Uh, again, uh, these are two things that are fairly simple to understand. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, so now let's go to the OAuth2 password authentication. So this is a little bit more complex than the basic authentication. Uh, so if I go into my OAuth2 password, uh, so this is another authentication mechanism that is uh, available in the, uh, uh, you, you can see that uh, there is this uh, OAuth2 password here that is available uh, in uh, the SAP BTP destinations. And let's see how this thing works. Uh, so here, uh, the grant type, so this is where we jump into the OAuth flow. Uh, so the grant type that is used in this OAuth2 password authentication uh, is the OAuth password grant flow. So this is the uh, grant flow that is being used. Uh, here you have to provide the client credentials plus the username and password. Uh, but let's talk about how this OAuth password grant flow works. Uh, so here, uh, you are the end user user right here and uh, you are logged into some application right here. So you are logged into this application. Now this application wants to access uh, some kind of API uh, from another application. So uh, you want the limited access to application two. Um, this application wants to access application two. So uh, what you could do uh, I mean, this is uh, what how the OAuth2 password uh, grant flow works, uh, is you provide this application one, you provide to application one, uh, the credentials, the username and password of application two. 
uh, and then now that application one has the credentials for application two, uh, it can send those credentials, uh, get uh, some kind of an access token, and then can make use of that access token to get some limited uh, resource, limited access to resources in application two. Now this uh, flow is kind of frowned upon uh, because uh, you are providing the username and password of application two uh, to application one. So unless you absolutely absolutely uh, trust application one uh, providing the credentials of application two to application one uh, is kind of uh, frowned upon uh, it's not uh, it's not recommended at all uh, so for example let's uh, take this uh, let's put some concrete values here uh, so let's say you're doing the tax uh, so you as the end user you're working on turbo tax to do the taxes and then turbo tax uh, at some stage I mean this is a hypothetical situation right so uh, the turbo tax does not use the OAuth for but I still I think it still requires the username and password for E-Trade, but it doesn't use the OAuth uh, uh, grant flow, the password grant flow. But uh, let's take, let's assume that it's using the OAuth password grant flow. Uh, so as you're doing the taxes, TurboTax tells you, hey, you know what? I can pull in all the information from E-Trade, uh, limited access. You, I can get limited access. You give me the E-Trade the credentials, the username and password, and I can go ahead and pull all the uh, tax-related documents so you don't have to manually type it in. So what you do is you provide TurboTax uh, the credentials of E-Trade, and then TurboTax uh, makes use of those credentials uh, and talks to E-Trade, uh, gets the access token, and then with the access token, it's able to pull the tax documents for that year. Uh, again, this is uh, this is not how it works, uh, but let's just assume that this is how it works. Um, now this of course means that you absolutely have to trust TurboTax because you're providing TurboTax with the uh, the credentials for E-Trade. Um, again, so this is uh, the uh, the OAuth the committee doesn't like this uh, password grant flow. This is uh, basically available uh, because of uh, legacy reasons. Uh, and going forward, this is not the way it's supposed to be. They may even remove it from the specs. Uh, but this is how the OAuth password grant flow works. Now, how is this uh, going? How can we use this, right? Uh, so let's take another example here. Uh, so you are as the end user. Uh, you log in. Again, this is a hypothetical situation. Uh, so you log into Google and assume Google is like the parent application, right? And Google has a whole bunch of uh, child microservices underneath of uh, Google. Let's assume that this is happening there. Uh, now you, this uh, Google, now that you've logged into Google, uh, Google wants to make some calls to the Google Maps API uh, and assume Google Maps API is a child microservice of this parent app. Now, because you've already logged into Google, uh, it may be just an extension that Google can go ahead and make a call to the Google Maps API because you already trust the parent app. You already trust Google. Uh, so what's uh, what's the big deal if uh, Google makes a call to the Maps API with the, with the credentials? So this is kind of acceptable. Uh, but again, um, so this is a, uh, this is not how it works. But uh, just assume that this is uh, how it works. Uh, so you are logged into the Google, and then Google is able. To, you have the uh, you provide the credentials so it can make calls to the Google Maps API. So this is kind of acceptable. In the same manner, right? Uh, let's say you're logged into SAP BTP Cloud Foundry. So you're already logged into the parent app. Uh, and uh, we know in Cloud Foundry, uh, everything is built uh, as like my child microservices. Uh, so uh, because you're logged into the parent app uh, and one of the child microservices to create, uh, to uh, you have access to the Cloud Foundry API. Uh, so now you should be able to access the API, the Cloud Foundry API. So this is uh, where you can use the OAuth2 password uh, grant flow. Uh, for example, let me go back to my uh, business application studio. Uh, let me clear this uh, terminal right here. And I'm already logged in, but I will go ahead and log in one more time. CF login. I'm going to log in to the SAP BTP. Um, and uh, let me go ahead and put in my password. 
now that I'm logged into the SAP BTP, uh, what I can do now is I can go ahead and make access, make use, like uh, I, I have the OAuth token because I'm logged in and I can even verify the OAuth token. I can say CF uh, OAuth token like this and you can see that I already have the token. I can even take this token and see how this uh, token looks like. Uh, and if I go into jwt.io, I should be able to see how this uh, token looks like and uh, with this token uh, you can see that I have uh, the cloud controller read the cloud controller write, uh, and I have uh, all these are the audiences the cloud controller so I can make use I can make use of this uh, JWT token uh, to make calls to this uh, cloud controller API so now what I can do is I can call uh, CF apps and this is going to give me a list of all the apps that are in my Cloud Foundry. Uh, and this is uh, all because I'm able to use this uh, JWT token and I'm able to go ahead and make calls to the uh, Cloud Foundry API. So in this situation, uh, you can use the password grant flow. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and create a destination uh, based on this uh, OAuth grant flow. Uh, again, the, the only time that you would use this uh, is uh, if you want to get access to the Cloud Foundry uh, API. Um, so here I have the CF API, the name, uh, and this is my URL for the Cloud Controller uh, because note that we have uh, access to Cloud Controller read and write. Uh, so I have uh, the, uh, this is the API, the Cloud Controller API, the URL. Uh, I select OAuth2 password. Now, ideally what you want to do is you want to give a technical username and password. You don't want to use your own personal username Name and password, uh, but here I've used my own uh, username and password. Uh, and then the client ID and secret, uh, this is going to be CF and the password is going to be blank. So you just put CF and blank. And this is the URL for the, the UAA URL. Uh, so not the excess UAA, but the UAA URL. Uh, so you put in this URL and now uh, with this help of this uh, destination, uh, you can make uh, similar calls to get the apps and so on. Uh, so here in my uh, application, I have uh, a cloud, uh, the SAP Cloud SDK. I'm going to make a call. Uh, so I have a call to get applications. So you can see I have a get call, get applications. I'm using the Cloud SDK uh, and I'm going to make a call using this destination CF API. Uh, so CF API, this is the destination here. Uh, and now I can make a call to their API, which is a slash V2 app, so I can get all these apps right here. Uh, so if I run this, uh, I will have to run this in hybrid mode. Uh, so I can run the CDS watch uh, dash dash profile hybrid. Uh, I already have a destination that I've, uh, I'm bound to. So you can see in my private JSON file uh, that I already have a destination that I'm bound to. So when I run this, I should be able to go ahead and make a call and get the uh, all the applications. So if I go to my request.http, uh, I have a call. If I send this uh, request, uh, it's going to go ahead and uh, make a call to the cloud controller and get all the information about my uh, applications. Uh, so that's uh, all about OAuth password uh, grant flow. Uh, use this uh, uh, in a restrictive manner. And uh, the only times that I've seen it being used uh, is when you're trying to make call to the cloud, uh, uh, the cloud foundry API. Okay, uh, in the next session, we will look at other forms of authentication.